what can you do with 64 cores that's harder to do with anything else? And is it a server? Is it a workstation? It's a swork station. That's Threadripper Pro. 64 cores, 32 cores, even 16 cores. But 64 cores, 64 cores is doing it in style, let me tell you. I don't think that people understand how disruptive Threadripper Pro is. Or anything, really. I mean, what AMD is doing here in the workstation market is kind of disruptive because it sort of turns the whole market on its head. It's like, oh, you need a really expensive computer. We're going to charge a lot of money. We want to cut. Whereas Threadripper Pro, like the goodwill can't be understated. I mean, yeah, it's expensive, but the limitation is your imagination. And if you haven't imagined what you can use 64 cores yet, well, you can opt for a 16 core CPU or opt for something lower end but this whole this whole thing has already moved the pricing but what can you do with a 64 core Threadripper? Let's take a look so this system behind me is Megadesk and I did a video on Megadesk and I've since upgraded Megadesk to Threadripper Pro the big deal with Threadripper Pro is that it feels like a server, it acts like a server. This motherboard, the ASUS WRX80 Sage E, has built-in IPMI, just like a server motherboard. It supports registered error correcting memory, uh, load reduced DIMMs, uh, just all the server accoutrement that you could possibly want. As configured, I have a half of a terabyte of memory in here. Eight DIMMs, 512 gigabytes. I also have 20 gigabytes of storage. Keoxia U.2 in the IC dock, yeah, four drives, 20 gigabytes, plus, you know, some other ones that are just scattered around the system with U.2 adapters. Of course, I can also use Keoxia storage on, uh, on the M.2 because I've got PCIe lanes for days, 128 PCIe lanes to be exact. Because if you're building a system like this, you probably have a lot of storage and GPU. And that's the first thing that you can build with this system, an incredible virtualization platform. I like to use VFIO. It means that I've put multiple graphics cards in the system and I'm running them with different virtual machines. This motherboard has so many PCIe lanes, I've put my MSI Supreme 3090 in the bottom and in the Fractal Meshify XL2, it hangs off of the bottom. It doesn't block any PCIe slots. Even though I'm using a triple slot GPU, I still have six PCIe slots available on this platform. That's incredible. I've gone for EK custom loop cooling, although you don't really need it. I like having it. I like being able to juice things a little bit. To be sure though, Threadripper Pro is not overclockable, but yeah, I just like having water cooling. That's just me. If you're running the absolute highest, fastest in storage, you can expect uh, transfer rates of about 20, 25 gigabytes per second from an NVMe array like this. So when you're working with a workstation that has 512 gigabytes of memory, 64 cores, and 20 gigabytes of uh, throughput per card. You could add in more than one. I certainly have. I put in two for a total of eight NVMe on this platform. I put in so many NVMe that uh, I've encountered a bug in the BIOS that they're fixing. Uh, more than 10 NVMe and um, they're working on it. It's almost fixed. Good news. As at the end of April, the new BIOS from Asus is out and it fixes the NVMe issue. At least I'm up to 23 NVMe. <laughs> Twenty million IOPS. Here we come. And that motherboard is not like any other server motherboard you will ever find. It has nicer features than most desktop motherboards. Like I say, it's a Swark station. So okay, you can run virtual machines. Uh, check this out. This is running an entire company as a simulation. So if you're doing uh, forensics or you know doing an incident response simulation, you can use Microsoft's PV tool. And just, it's like, okay, I've got a couple of domain controllers and a couple of member servers. That's three servers. Let's give those 16 gigabytes of memory. I've got about eight workstations. Those need about eight gigabytes of memory. Let's just P2V the entire company. Put it in a little sandbox so it can't get on the internet or confuse anything on the local area network. It's all simulated. It's all software. So I have the entire company simulated on this thing in virtual machines. And whether you're running on a Linux operating system or a window, the Windows operating system with Hyper-V, you can do it either way. P2V, virtualize those physical machines, and with 512 gigabytes of memory, we haven't even scratched what the limits are. 
That right there, that's the meat and potatoes of an entire company. Executive machines, but it's not literally everything, but it's pretty much everything. Active Directory, I can do incident response, I can do, you wouldn't really wanna do this for like testing and upgrades and stuff because there's better ways to do it. But if you just need to get everything in a sandbox, the fact that I can do this on a single machine and honestly, these virtual machines run better than their real hardware in a lot of cases, which is just sad for the state of upgrades that we have in corporations. But Threadripper Pro is what makes that go. All of that U.2 storage, my setup here with this workstation motherboard. I would love it if form factors of desktop machines change so that the graphics card, because it's gotten so big and it blocks so many PCIe slots that, you know, just by the standard, by the convention, the graphics card hangs off of the end of the motherboard. There's like nine slots at the back of this case. We just have the graphics card out of the way. And Asus even had the forethought to put the connectors in at a right angle along the bottom edge of the motherboard so that the GPU works really well there. So I can run multiple GPUs, 12, 15 NVMe, whatever we need. This much power in one machine is completely intoxicating. I mean, I can't, I can't think of a way to explain it. You know, there's, there's like a trillion transistors in a modern iPhone, but probably more than that. And the cost of a transistor in 1950, to have a trillion of them was like the entire world's economic output. This thing has so many transistors in it, I think it's basically equivalent to the entire economic output of the planet like five years ago. It's that insane. So what we're doing right now is using MDisk, it's free software. We're creating a RAM drive that's 320 gigabytes. There's probably a few of you watching that only have a 250 gig or 128 gig SSD that you're running from, but uh, we're gonna copy Grand Theft Auto V to a RAM disk. I don't mean to pick on GTA V, it's just, it's just so easy. You see, I ran GTA V for years on a high core count machine, and uh, it was years before they fixed a bug where if you had more than like eight or 10 cores, it would just straight up crash. So GTA, running from a RAM disk. It's still kind of slow, isn't it? Why is it slow when it's running from a RAM disk on a 64 core machine? I mean, Windows itself struggles to handle 64 cores. I kind of get that, okay, maybe Grand Theft Auto is going to crash when you've got more than like 8 or 10 cores. That's fixed now, to be sure. 120 FPS on a 3090 seems a little low. I mean, GTA 5 is just not that new. But this is important because can you imagine if the Rockstar developers, if the game developers had had such... Um, I mean, this, this machine is the pinnacle of civilization. And if your game is running weird on this, uh, mere mortal tier machines, you're going to probably have to do some more work on your game. I mean, just the other day, there was a huge patch that saved minutes of load time when you're loading on in online because the system spent a long time parsing JSON. Now, my system's still doing a little bit more in the background. We're running the benchmark and you know, all that's really exciting, but I'm still running Hyper-V in the background with all the virtual machines for the entire business. Two domain controllers, a file server, and you know, half a dozen workstations, while also playing the GTA 5 benchmark demo. <laughs> How insane is this? This is a, a normal desktop computer. I mean, admittedly it's high end, it's nice, but 4K, 120 Hertz on Mega Desk. 38 gigabytes per second disk array. But wait, there's more. Through the magic of the level one text KVM and switching a series of inputs. Yes, we're running nested virtualization. <laughs> Although note that that works a little better in the Windows Insider ring with the Hyper-V side of things. So don't really recommend running Hyper-V in a nested configuration. It's not, that's a story for another day. Um, but yes, you can, you can have it all with Threadripper Pro and that's what's exciting. And you know, 512 gigabytes of memory isn't even maxing this out. So I don't know. It's a different, it's a different mindset. You have the machine, you'll think of interesting stuff to do with it versus normally when you're working with machines that are this high end, it's like, oh, I have a very specific purpose in mind. I'm going to make a lot of money working in industry X or industry Y and therefore I can afford to have a ridiculously expensive machine. This feels more like I've got this really high-end hardware and we can sell it, you know, AMD can sell it at this price and make some money, but they're not really, you know, squeezing every single, uh, uh, you know, dollar out of the equation that they possibly can because 
This is a crazy amount of horsepower, and we've come this far in a very short amount of time after a very long period of stagnation for workstations, in my opinion. And yes, this is Threadripper Pro. This is, you know, like I say, the pinnacle of civilization, where it's a, it's a swark station. It's a server, and it's a workstation. It does a little bit of everything. People could remote desktop into those, <laughs> the windows, the entire windows forest right now, and use their machines like nothing is going on. And yeah, I'm starting to tax the memory capacity, and yeah, I'm starting to tax the, uh, the, the, the number of CPUs that I have. And you could do this with 32 cores, just as easily as 64 cores, probably also even 16 cores, but with 64 cores, you're doing it in style. And the machine's got a little bit more breathing room when I'm running all of those tasks in parallel in the background. It's really, it's it's something different, and it's something exciting. And the, uh, the waveringness in my voice is just because I don't know what to do with so much computer horsepower. It's crazy. I can be running builds in the background and simulating things and playing games and it just, it doesn't care. It just shrugs it all off. And this is going to lead to a new era of innovation. Smart people are going to get their hands on this and they're going to do truly incredible things. And I can't wait. I'm Wendell. This is level one. This has been a quick look at what you can do with 64 cores of madness. You know, there's a full build log if you want to check that out in some of my other videos. We're using Asus WRX Sage, like I said, and a 64 core Threadripper, 512 gigabytes of memory. I've got the Sabrent Rocket uh, as a boot disk, and then all of my bulk storage is Keoxia. And uh, there's a 20 million IOPS video coming for that as well, so we're gonna, gonna try to get 20 million IOPS on a desktop system. And that's a whole other, that's a whole other thing. So I'm Wendell, this is level one, I'm signing out, I'll catch you later. Thank you.